All right, let's see about getting this chip installed. Revelation now available in the vendor interface. Salutations and felicitations, sir, and a most jocund welcome to the sink. I am your electronic valet and household central processor. May I be of service, sir? Valet. Never heard it pronounced that way before. Are you some kind of artificial intelligence? Regrettably not, sir. All modules in this habitat are synthetic personalities atop a mundane operating system. There is no intelligence here, sir. You mean there are other personality modules here? Indeed, sir. Though if sir's aim is to activate them, I lament to inform, sir, that most have been offline for some years. If sir were to ask my opinion, I should venture that sir is better off without them. However, if sir is determined to inflict upon sir's self their dubious services, sir might locate backup personality disks elsewhere in the facility. You have such negative opinions of all the other personalities. So I can access their functions without loading the personality holotapes. Tragically, the core operating systems are also located on the personality tapes, sir. Once the tape is installed, sir may request I switch their dialectic interfaces off, and I shall oblige with great delectation. However, sir will still be required to locate and install a backup holotape to access their functionality. Why are there so many personality modules? As I am given to understand, sir, this facility was once the property of a Dr. Mobius. He crafted the personality modules as part of a collection of experiments on the subject of machine-human interface. As to the reason for the unusual choices of devices to receive the modules, I cannot say. Uh, never mind. What services do you provide? In addition to managing the personality matrices of the other household utilities, I can provide Sir with direct access to the commissary. Any goods Sir might require may be purchased through my shopkeep interface, whence tiny robots should deliver them forthwith to this very domicile. I'd like to buy some things. Very good, Sir. And might I venture to opine that a new trilby might be just the thing to complete Sir's ensemble? Nah, I'm fine. I just immediately sell the thing they gave me. I don't need this. Get rid of the ammo immediately. Sell their own cigarettes back to them that I found in their own room. Biological research station, a fridge. Even more purified water if I would like to weigh myself down further. Thaw the Nuka Cola? Why would I want to thaw an ice cold Nuka Cola? If anything, we should be incredibly impressed that I've done like two entire expansions and my my Nuka Cola has remained unthawed. Does Oh, this was closed before. So they're gonna have to move the. Oh. That's my spine and my heart. But you lost my brain. Why does my spine look suspiciously cybernetic, though? What does that mean? I really need those to be alive and whatnot. Can I have those back? I don't want to be a cyborg mon monster man. This is safe, but it's empty. Even Muggy's disabled. This DLC has like a whole home in it. On top of everything else. Auto dock's got to be a little terrifying. Alright, well I don't think I actually have much reason to be here. He has very little to actually offer me at the moment, but I can try meeting everyone, I guess. I'm currently at the mercy of a variety of just insane people that think they're the geniuses that are the kings of the world and all that, but they don't seem to actually be good at all that much. And 
openly ignorant to basic things like the fact that their talk their audio is coming out of them the whole time and I can understand everything they're saying. The lobotomite animal before me. What other terrifying terrors will plague us in our quest for knowledge? Communists? Communist animals, perhaps? Be warned. Attempt to propaganda me. I will shriek as a frightened babe calling loyal cyber dogs to my aid. Do you comprehend, commie animal? Do you always get this dramatic? Drama? There is no drama in science. As I learned in high school, science is an intellectual pursuit devoid of bestial emotions. Unless, of course, you are a communist. Like Betsy Bright, who sat next to me in math, and her smoking confederate, Richie Marcus. As I learned in my high school, American High, AHS, drama is for movies. Things of fiction. Here in the think tank, the only star is science. You really went and made getting bullied in high school your entire personality, huh? Why does Klein want these particular technologies? There is logic and purpose in it. If these technologies are needed to pierce the forbidden zone, so be it. Science is powerful, and in the right hands, our hands, if we had hands, we would be nigh unstoppable. Who are you? What do you do here? Before you is the brain of Dr. Boros, head of animology, beastology, and DNA scrambling technology here at Big Mountain. I lay the bones and hearts of animals bare beneath my searing gaze, especially the dogs. I did so love dogs once, especially Gabe, that rascal. But there are many animals to shape. Industrious Cazadors, the happy-go-lucky Night Stalkers. They are my living, breathing DNA test tubes. Night Stalkers? Those crazy coyote snake things. Indeed. Docile. Curious. Safe. Sterile. They are contained here at Big Mountain to preserve DNA and for observation. Contained at Big Mountain? Those things are all over the Maho Mojave. No, such creatures are found only here for research purposes. They would no more be capable of escape than breeding. Uh, I don't think they're sterile. They breed all right. I cannot expect a lobotomite to understand the careful surgical castrating procedures used in their creation. Perhaps a demonstration of my castrating power would settle your doubts. Go ahead. You might make me more fertile. Or impregnate me. Impregnate you? What? Do you want to make me vomit inside my tank? The mere notion makes the edges of my biomed gel crystallize into asymmetrical patterns. Impreg me, coward. You don't seem to have a grasp on your own research. Nonsense! That is what you speak. Nonsense! From beyond! I was at the top of my high school class in American high school. I knew facts. I knew figures. I knew data. We would know if our research was flawed. It is not. We never contradict ourselves. So do not even try. So, Night Stalkers were created for what purpose then? To preserve Coyote. No, no, wait. The snake DNA was important because 
the snakes with the rattles were dying out, and... Or maybe it was a bet from Callus in X8. He had some mud lion, eagle, condor idea. Bet you can't breed this, he said. Showed him. Then it spliced itself into a coyote, a snake thing, which was eventually successful. Kept that DNA where it belonged. Spliced. Why are we even debating this? What you ask is of no importance. Mobius besieges us. There are more important things to worry about than data and facts. I mean, Night Stalkers are pretty cool, so he, like, he accidentally made something cool. For no apparent reason, though. There's no idea what he was doing. I want to know more about Mobius in the Forbidden Zone. The malignant tumor that is Mobius plagues us all. His hunger for power, insatiable. From his lair in the Forbidden Zone, his terrifying robo-scorpion army clicks and whirs across the crater a big mountain, ever seeking, ever stinging. He must be stopped or all of Big Mountain shall be destroyed. How much danger can you be in if he says this, if he sends the same message every day? Is he even alive? It, does he say the same thing every day or is it literally the same message like repeating like could he what if he's not even there? Tell me more about this radar fence around the crater. The radar fence protects us all. If evidence is correct, the one who built it is me. It keeps anything with a disembodied brain inside, like us. And anything without a brain, also inside. It is the ultimate defense against communist aggression. There'll be no infectious ideas on my watch. Yep, that was the secret. You didn't need to fight their propaganda or anything. You just had to fight brains themselves. This is very inherently self-defeating in that, like, aha, the secret to uh, defeating communism is not allowing anyone to think about anything. Because if they think about stuff, they might be like, communism is kind of rad, actually, you know? Like, if you just give it a thought for a minute, like, you know, you know, Disco Elysium for a minute? Just give it a minute? So I get my brain back, I can leave. What? Why would you do either of those things? That is madness. There is nothing outside Big Mountain. Uh, we're pretty sure. Uh, we would know. Ever since my anxiety-filled days of powerlessness and being bullied in American high school, I have dreamed of such security as the fence. That and giant cybernetic dogs that would ruthlessly patrol and kill anyone who wasn't my friend, like Richie Marcus and Betsy Bright. Who's laughing now, Betsy? I hope you and Richie are happy smoking in your radioactive coffins. I'm glad you never came to my birthday party. But there's a whole world beyond this place. No! Beyond is death. Despite mounting evidence to the contrary. No matter where these strange humans wander in from with their ideas and new brains, there is nothing beyond Big Mountain. Evidence to the contrary. Enough! Stop filling my precious brain cell units with irrelevant data. You sound like the other visitors, making wild claims of a world beyond, where there is a war beyond war. It is unproven and unthinkable. Bother the other doctors with your crackpot theories. I have no time. None of us do. What a deeply unlikable character. Can you tell me about the Big Empty? That castrated nickname of our facility is not its true name. The true name is 
Big Mountain, where are your manners? It is our home, threatened by the horrors of Mobius. All we wish to do is continue our research. Layer upon layer, above and beneath the floor of the crater, until we have our answers. But no, Mobius will not let us rest, scaring us with his scary robots, with their laser tails, and blowing up all the time. This crater looks like it's been tag-teamed by giant fuckbots. It was not our first choice of testing grounds, but we no longer have the luxuries of our test cities. Then we lost the mountain. After the explosion, we couldn't find it anymore. So the crater became our testing grounds for science. Test cities? Yes. In the past, individuals would come to us, pay for technology, and if their town, community, or city was just right, we could use that city as a controlled experiment. vault -Tech was much better at it, of course. We had to make do. Get permission. Sometimes. If only we could have used Kami cities. But capturing whole cities was hard, so we captured enough commies to make cities of our own. So we had a group of Chinese prisoners to experiment on. Those were the days. But the true test was science on unsuspecting Americans. Whether it was holograms, new autodocs, toxins, vending machines, we wound them up, let them go into tiny, isolated towns, then we observed. This game really frames the opposition to communism as being small, cowardly, and idiotic. Just, just a huge crybaby. Just a dumb, small-minded, stupid person. What was this explosion? Yes, quite unexpected and embarrassing. All better now after the landscaping, though. Much more pleasing to our monitors. And the crater helps keep everything inside because it is bowl-shaped. Uh, never mind. We've spoken enough. Until next time, then. Provided there is a next time. For any of us. He's awful. Alright. So we had two dominant people. Well, there was one person that we couldn't understand at all. There was him. With the loudest member of the, th of the conversation for multiple reasons. Then we had the creepy, surgery, stalkery, distressing person. One of them couldn't really speak at all. There was two people that were harder to separate personality-wise that we still need to find in here. I think it's going to take us a while just to get get ready to leave this place, but I want I do want to chat around. Uh oh. Uh. Oop. Hi. Can you speak? Uh, do you understand me? Did something happen with your voice module? That, uh... It's too bad. Or good. Or something. I'm pretty sure you can understand me, and I want some answers. Can you tell me about these technologies Klein wants? You sound... agitated. Or you're percolating or something. I'll... be going now. They make no effort to find any other way of communicating which they probably could do. 
but they just don't. It's like, nope, my voice thing's broken. I guess I'll never be able to communicate again. Dr. O. Breaking news! Talking lobotomite arrives from Think Tank. Its purpose, unknown. Undefinable. Its presence here, impossible. You're Dr. O, correct? O? Oh, yes. I'm not going to bother correcting you. At least you got the doctor part correct. I can be grateful for that, at least. Stop the presses! Just in for my eye monitors. Is that Rob Kotek on your arm? It is! What's your agenda bringing that in here? What, my pip boy? How dare you bring Rob Kotek in here? What are you showing off? How great Robert House and his big company are? Oh, we can make Securitrons better than any robot those geniuses at Big Mountain can make, and they'll last a thousand years. Uh. You're lucky I don't have hands to tear that dip boy off your arm, or feet to stomp on its stupid metal guts. Ugh. Damn Robco. I don't think I realized that House made the Pip-Boys? Huh. Or owned the company that made them anyway into the actual work. The, uh... <laughs> this is all like a fucking like Black Mesa versus Aperture Science situation. I don't think I'll worry you by telling you what House and his robots have been up to since. Worry about House? Why would I do that? Hope he died alone in a dingy room, streaming his last remaining bodily fluids into jars. And him and his dirty girl bots. Don't even get me started on those filthy biological catcher's mitts. Calm down, just want to ask some questions. Fine. Ask. What do you do here? All things robotical. You see a robot? I made it. See a broken robot? I made it that way. Deconstructed it down to parts. I have a gift with machines. I can render anything inoperable. Preserve them in a non-functioning state. That doesn't sound impressive. Breaking machines, that is. Who asked you? You just wait until a working machine threatens you, and you'll wish I was around! Uh, what did you and Klein say before about the Central Intelligence Unit barter functions? I have no idea. I'm a robotical engineer, not a... rememberer of archaic trade routines. Do you have another name? Yeah, I do. It wasn't always O. I just took that one by default, because sometimes it's easier to accept the mistake as long as the purpose works. I don't want to get into it. It's a sore topic with me. It makes my gel ripple. Talking about things bothering you, well... Might help, or something. And it might help if you left me alone. Why are you even talking to me? If I need any bonding, I'll go find two ionized molecules to smash. Tell me about Mobius and these monsters of his. That genius Mobius somehow cobbles together these really impressive looking robot scorpions with spare parts. Even painted them. Tried to see what makes them tick. Can't even examine them without them detonating all over me. Left with shrapnel and burns. Every time. Supposedly, he has even larger models. Even a giant robot scorpion hidden deep within the Forbidden Zone. Yeah, right. Giant monsters, sure. A giant robot scorpion? What is this, Wasteland? Yeah, crazy, right? Something right out of a midnight science fiction feature. Ridiculous. What are the odds? Everything else that's been happening has been so grounded. Can you tell me about this facility? Big Mountain used to be a mountain. Then there was a slight mishap. Now it's a crater. The dome used to be buried, now it's exposed to the sky. Don't get me wrong. It makes the sky light up like a planetarium at night. All those spectra. So soothing. I think we've spoken long enough. Until our next scheduled audio transmission and reception, then. Oh, I don't call ahead. 
You are an unusual specimen to so boldly walk into the mighty expanse of the think tank. Fearless and proud as a teddy bear. Between the extraction of their higher reasoning abilities and urination-inducing fear, most lobotomites dare not approach us, let alone speak to us. Yet you have no such fear. Facing me, epidermis fleshed with blood, plasma running molten beneath, your face contorting with muscular expression. Will you indulge me? Say a few words. Face towards the monitors, please, so that I might record it for further examination. Okay, so you have a sex dungeon. Address? Password? <laughs> the quick scribe jumped over the lazy paladin? Yes, yes, go on. Seeing your lips and mouth forming words, both revolting and somehow... How does it feel to have the flesh roll around in your mouth like that? To control each muscle and the tongue? Like having a fish or extremely dexterous slug lolling and flopping in one's mouthful cavity. You seem to be looking at me a lot. Your, your primitive eyes deceive you. No, no, there are no needs contained within my soft, soft gel. Much, much like the soft gel of your eyes. No, nothing here. Uh, who are you? What, what do you do here? Why, my little bear of teddiness. I am Dr. Dalla, first head chief researcher of mineralogy and medicinal sciences. I have 211 doctorates in both applied sciences and techniques to apply those sciences. I also possess a degree in curiosity and advanced curiosity. That is merely schooling, however. When possible, I prefer fieldwork and observation to holotape eidetics. It has proven useful, especially now. I have become the expert on humanology and lobotomite behavior here at Big Mountain. My research doesn't descend into formography. It is only science. Uh, what's formography? It's excessive examination of the human form to achieve psychological arousal. Disgusting. I would never succumb to such base appetites. Distractions. Filthy, filthy distractions. Okay, the more that this person goes on about their kink, the more I'm convinced that there's gotta be an AO3 ca tag just for this character. 211 doctorates, how is it even possible? Why, we create not only scientific marvels here at Big Mountain, but new sciences as well. Everything can be quantified categorized and dissected until every group can be subgrouped or partitioned. First head chief researcher, a lot of titles. What is a name without a title or a suffix for the sake of hierarchy? It is a long-standing quantification of personality and importance. We could not do without it. Surely you must be aware of the gravity of such attached appellations, just as surely as you must have a title. I'm sometimes called a courier. Oh, a mailman. A delivery man. Someone who takes parcels from place to place using their primitive feet or similar conveyance. You are the second one I've met in recent times. Very different specimens. Interest percolated, in quotes, unfinished. Graphic depictions of violence. No archive warnings apply. Dr. Dalla slash Courier 6. Dr. Dalla Courier 6, the think tank, Fallout New Vegas. Lobotomy. Unfinished thing I started about my Courier's interactions with Dalla. Maybe I'll finish this, but I don't expect it. <laughs> and there's Old World Illness by Gwild Cheese. Uh, Fallout New Vegas, Old World Blues. Uh... Creator chose not to use archive warnings. Courier 6, Courier Lilith, 
Muggy, Dr. Zero, Dr. Eight, Dr. Dalla, Dr. Boris, Dr. Klein, Sick Fick, Old World Blues, The Sink, Freeform, The Think Tank. The courier catches the common cold and it's up to members of the Think Tank to nurse her back to health. What? Neither of these sound as horny as I expected. Was not fully ready for, uh, <laughs> the courier, I guess that's what a sick fic is? It's a category of, like, somebody gets sick and they're working through that or something? The descriptions are just the horniest thing I've ever seen, so I really thought there'd be something else, but those seem to be the only descriptions that I'm seeing here. Have I ever read a story on AO3 or just been aware of its existence? And that's it. I'm never honestly sure. Anyway, there was another courier. Of course. You must have met others in your travels. This one had met other couriers too. Although it sounded as if he hadn't met the correct one. He asked us all many questions. And then he asked a most perplexing one. We had to segment the event out of our memories for safety. What was the question? I do not know, nor should we try to access it. Perhaps Klein has the logs. My evaluation would be to let your own curiosity go. I do not think that Klein remembers the conversation as being satisfactory. Why did you remove my brain? And how? Oh, removing it is a simple procedure. Well, except the complications it can cause to the heart and spine. But once the heart and spine are gone, no trouble at all. Clamp the subject down. One laser incision around the skull. Crack. Snip. Done. The brain is finally free of the skin envelope, which is then kept automated for cleanup duties around Big Mountain. Lobotomites. With you, however, something is definitely wrong. We've never had a lobotomite who kept speaking after being forcibly lobotomized. I am relieved the pacification field is working. If it didn't, I would broadcast some concern to my colleagues about safety protocols. But how am I still talking and walking around? That is a good question. My theory is that the Tesla coils in your brain pan are still connected to your brain somehow. It really could be anywhere. Brains are a lot smarter than most researchers give them credit for. We still have your spine and heart. If you were to somehow find your brain, wherever it slurped off to, <laughs> you could humanically reduce yourself again. The word slurp. I did not expect to hear it in a video game. I'm, ass I'm assuming Mobius found my brain and, like, is broadcasting it to my body on purpose, and that's how this is happening, essentially. I, I, I feel strange in here. Peaceful, but on edge. It is the pacification field emitters that are broadcasting into the emptiness of your skull. Without a brain, your aggression is suppressed in here. Is there any way to shut it off? Why would you want such a thing? You might surrender to your hormones and commit primal aggression on me, on us, again and again. Then I would have <laughs> to return the favor, activating my vivisectors and gently lobotomizing you from behind. Not something I would relish doing. No, the only way to circumvent the field is to have a brain, and we extracted that like we do all the lobotomites here. Uh, the phrasing of everything that was just said. Uh, I have to look at this story. I can't. I have to. This character's gonna throw shit at me. Uh, you knew you were the only lobotomite that had actually that had actually been able to speak and converse with a think tank on a uh, tank on an intellectual level. But yet this didn't stop you from feeling sharp pangs of jealousy each time Dalo would mention would mention a lobotomite that wasn't you. One morning you'd brought her a teddy bear you'd found while exploring the area around Big Mountain. And to your confusion, she asked you why you did this and explained to you how the lobotomites were her teddy bears. 
She wasn't talking about the stuffed animals. It was as if you had no other choice than to find this adorable and to reassure her that you were her teddy bear and not to bother with any other lobotomites and you, <laughs> you could and would give her everything she'd ask of you and then more, none of which they could do or let alone comprehend. You made it known from the start that the attraction was mutual. Daily, like clockwork, you'd be coming back to her for what she called a breather. All as per her request, as long as you don't ignore the refractory period. <laughs> you'd get nice and close to either of her eye monitors, so close you were feeling... Uh... Or, or mouth if you were feeling more into it, depending on the day, and breathe deeply, sometimes using your index finger to trace little hearts in the condensation of your hot breath left on the screen. You didn't care if the other think tanks were watching. Let them watch. If anything, it just fueled you to act even more suggestive than you were already being. The fact that they considered your behavior repulsive and repugnant just turned you on more. Oh... Oh, this is wild. I don't think the story ever gets explicit. It also just cuts off mid-sentence. But I just uh, <laughs> I had to find the the dollar slash fix. Uh, what a character. Somebody was having some fucking fun making this nightmarishly scripted character. Let's see. Can you tell me about Dr. Mobius? Dr. Mobius, a monstrous brain creased with wrinkles of a thousand evils, with but one jaundiced eye with which to perceive the world. Exiled from the think tank for crimes too heinous to remain in recorded memory, and perhaps differences in research methodology. His one terrible eye forever peers at us, an eye of ever-increasing magnification. He watches from his dome in the Forbidden Zone, spying on us all. I don't think you guys can have jaundice. I don't understand how the tech client wants will help. It'll all become clear. If not, at least we will have the technology here at the dome where all technology belongs. When we have all the technology, all the answers, we can share it with the world. Piece by piece, all will be in order, and all will be like Big Mountain. You're trying to take all the technology so you can give it back. Sharing it with a world that you don't think exists? Can you tell me about the Big Empty, uh, uh, Big Mountain? This mountain, now Crater, encompasses the sum total of knowledge of humankind. It is Big Mountain, where all questions can be answered. You'll see. No matter what your questions, Big Mountain will provide the answers. As it has done for so many before you. Previous test subjects? Oh yes. We've had other subjects visit. It's why we had to calibrate the pacification field and warm up our brainial beams and vivisectors. Only a short time ago, we had three minus one subjects arrive, and they ruined several experiments, and even injured two of our staff. It is a shame their brains left with them. With you, however, we have taken precautions to ensure that problem won't repeat itself. We've conditioned you so you can't speak of this place, discuss our secrets, or attempt to use force against us in any way. Isn't that nice? Yeah, I love that. Why did you say three minus one subjects before? I about to find out that he can't that they can't say two. Because three minus one is two. Two spoke to us, one after the other. One mean, one curious. But there was a third we didn't speak to. The last one is the minus one. It got traumatized then taken to one of our medical centers for de-traumatization. A rather unsettling procedure. I'm guessing the name's not very accurate, then. What happened with the visitors? Ask Dr. O. And you could have asked eight once, until he was severely damaged in the attack. 
But we like him better this way. Yo, you don't like him being able to speak. Hmm. Uh, we've s spoken enough. Until our next interaction, my intriguing little lobotomite. Ha ha ha, you're all very upsetting. 